that get into Il Monstra, Mexican Monster, David Benavides, and how he looked. So let's keep it 100 about David, the Monster, Benavides. We know what it is with David. He's cloud chasing Tenelo Alvarez. So did he do enough? Did he prove enough? Well, be honest. I gotta say he's not a monster. Let's keep it 100. Let's keep it a buck on El Monstra. He looked good. But if we're keeping it real, I mean, Gavastic laid down. He didn't come to fight. I mean, the guy was throwing pity pats. And if you ask me, it looked like he really wasn't trying to win. I just gotta be honest. I wasn't impressed because Gavostik wasn't fighting back. I mean, I think he landed maybe two or three punches, but David Benavides was just beating on him like a drum. And then, uh, you know, the first six rounds, just dominant, dominant, dominant. David Benavides, uh, the question was, can he fight a bigger man? He actually looked like the smaller man. He was skinny fat. You could see the waist around him, but he was not able to just walk down and bully Gavostik. We, we seen the difference. David actually had to move his head. He had to keep his hands moving. He looked like a very, uh, I don't want to say a slick boxer, not a technical boxer, but did a lot of things boxing wise that were to the naked eye impressive. But if we're being really 100%, uh, Gavazdik was not there to win. He was there to survive. He was eating some vicious, vicious body shots. David Benavides was just putting paws on him. Gavazdik got into retreat mode and then maybe the final two rounds, he actually started throwing and landing. He was catching David a few times. Now, one thing I have to question about David Benavides is that gas tank. Uh, he looked like he was running out of gas in the middle rounds. I mean, they said the monster, he just comes in, he throws a thousand punches, he doesn't stop. And we didn't see that. It is obvious that he had a little bit more difficulty looking like the monster against a bigger, stronger, faster opponent. Now, I'm not saying Gavosdik had those advantages, but it was clear that he was fighting somebody bigger and faster than he had been used to. And he wasn't able just to open up and throw punches willy-nilly because Gavosdik could uh, throw some heat back his way. The sad part about the fight is we really didn't get to see that. And uh, so I got to give the grade, I'm going to give him a, a B minus because, you know, let's be honest, David Benavides, you go around talking all this shit. You need to wipe the floor with these guys. This guy was 36, coming off a four year retirement. Yeah, he had comeback bounce, but they were against nobodies. So it wasn't like he was able to to actually prove something that. Uh, yeah, it just it just wasn't what I was expecting. And and that's the fucked up thing about boxing. It was a clear dominant win, but uh when you talk like that, you need to come in and be the monster. When you say the monster, you're kicking guys asses. They they don't want no more. And you know to Gavaldon's credit, uh he was taking some uh, hellacious body shots. Uh, they were vicious digging hooks by Benavides, but nothing that does stop Gavaldon. I mean, he looked, he looked okay. He looked okay. He was beat up. Uh, Benavides was a little marked up, but, uh, nothing that was a shockingly scary, shockingly like wild moment. It was, it was just a beat down by a, I don't even want to say overmatched opponent. It just looked like an opponent who wasn't there to win. It remind me of uh, the other week. It was Xander Zayas versus a guy named Tashir. And that guy, same thing. Just a guy kind of pity padding. He wasn't necessarily afraid or scared of the, the monster, as they like to say. And he was he was able to survive. And, and, you know, that's what a good boxer does is he, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to go in. He's not going to get knocked out. He's going to be somewhat competitive. But uh, he's not going to take any risk. He didn't take any risk. David Benavides did not wow anybody. It was it was a lackluster fight and you know that's what the fans are looking for they want to see either dominant and stop a guy and finish him and make a statement or you know it has to be two-way action that the other guy is fighting back and and, he, and he's gonna go out on a shield and that's what i said i said before david benavides at 168 his biggest advantage was that he was able to just be a Frankenstein, get in a high guard, and walk opponents down and just overwhelm them with uh, power shots and uh, activity. And he wasn't he wasn't able to do that. It's like he tried in about round seven or eight, he had to take rounds off. We did not see the gas tank. Is it because he wasn't working with Memo Haredi anymore? I mean, there's questions. But David Benavides with this performance and the way Gavosdig looked, I, I would say that... Uh, the winner of Better Be of Bivol 
Or if it's Dimitri Bivol, he's just going to go into a David Benavides fight later this year. If better be it for some reason is not able to make it back, uh, would beat David Benavides. I think Bivol shows that he, he's a much better boxer than anything David's faced. And uh, he would be the favorite against David Benavides. I did not see David had said that, oh, going up to 175, not having to kill myself. I'm going to be even more powerful. I'm going to be way faster. I'm going to have more speed and power. And none of these things are things that we've seen. So we have to take that with a grain of salt. Now, some people may say, oh, well, David has to get acclimated to the weight. No, no, we don't. No, this is not another fighter that is supposed to be, you know, a decent fighter moving up. You know, Pitbull moved up and was able to dominate, you know. And then there's guys like Teofimo. They move up and they struggle. And that's what it looked like David Benavides. It looks like he will have more and more problems with better fighters. Because we have to be honest, Gavosdik was not there to win. He was there to make David Benavides look good. And he did to a certain extent. But, you know, David Benavides was not, uh, did not do the job and stop Gavosdik. That's what this guy was brought in to do. I mean, look, David, you gotta, you gotta put on a performance. You know, even your, uh, the, the main feature, the guy that you're on the undercar with, Stank Davis, put a, made a statement. Um, you know, and, and that's what you gotta do in these high level bouts. That's what the fans, you gotta get the fans talking. You got them, you gotta get them to say, oh man, we see why Canelo Alvarez don't wanna fight this guy. And, uh, for the first seven rounds, I was, I was, I was thinking that. I'm like, wow, you know what? Canelo may not wanna fight this, fight this guy. But, but I was waiting for Govozdik to, to fight back. I'm like, okay, maybe he's trying to wear out David Benavides. And to a certain extent, it, it kind of looked like that. But then Kovosik just, you know, he would land a good punch here and there and then he would just stop. So uh, I just really got to question Kovosik's, uh mindset in his heart. It's like, I don't think he was there to win, you know, but David did not go out and finish the job. And that's what ultimately you're chasing a guy, Canelo Alvarez. That's what you definitely got to do. And uh, after that performance, seeing the lack of speed and power, I've seen some good things and I've seen some things that they would question, mainly the gas tank and the lack of one punch knockout power. So going into a Canelo Alvarez fight, if he had to come back down, I would still have to favor Canelo Alvarez. I'm not sure that uh, David Benavides uh, beats or stops Canelo Alvarez. David Benavides may have some trouble, you know, even, and then after the fight, you know, he blames uh, an injury. You know, when Canelo Alvarez did that, uh, you know, people smashed on Canelo Alvarez. So, you know, if you're a David Benavides pom-pom waiver, you're going to give him that excuse. But uh, I'm not buying it. I don't think there was an injury. And, you know, if he has an injury, it, what it looks like is going to happen. He's not going to fight for the rest of the year. So, you know, we're, we can kiss a Canelo Alvarez fight because, you know, if I'm Canelo, I say, hey, let's fight right now. And David, he's not going to be able to. So call his bluff, Canelo. If this guy's saying he's injured, call his bluff, fight him, and kick his ass. So, you know, David, you, you, there's no excuses at this level. You know, let's be honest. He's only relevant because he has... The Canelo Alvarez uh, name attached to himself, or he's cloud chasing Canelo Alvarez. But David Benavides, like I said, I give him a B minus. If it was on a an even scale, it would be a B plus performance. You know, maybe A minus. But uh, we're, you know, as a boxing fan, as someone who tries to watch the sport with a critical eye. I seen the gas tank as a major, major issue. Now, David, and you, you're telling the fans, you're telling people you're supposed to be 10 times better. Your hand doesn't have anything to do with how your body looks and about how you're putting the punches together. That man was there to be taken out and you weren't able to do that. So at the end of the day, I have to question your heart and dedication. You know, they seen him drunk at fights. It's like, has David Benavides learned his lesson about party? Is he getting too fat? Um, we got to question these things, man, because Canelo Alvarez, he looked great against Jaime Munguia. Uh, David Benavides, you might have to have surgery. So how realistic is a Canelo Alvarez fight? You know, you should have you should have did that surgery before. And that way uh, you'd be ready for a Canelo Alvarez fight when, when he picked you. So, um, you know, maybe Canelo calls his bluff and says, hey, man, let, let's let's fight. There's going to be no time for surgery. You got to take it. Kill yourself to make 168. And uh, Canelo Alvarez and David Benavides is a 55-45 fight. 
Uh, right now, I think uh, Canelo Alvarez is still the favorite. I think Dimitri Bivol is the favorite against David Benavides. I think Benavides showed promise. I'm not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not an excuse to get acclimated to the weight. The injury wasn't an excuse. We will see what happens. My prediction is that David Benavides will uh, duck some Bivol or better be a smoke, claiming that he needs surgery if he can't get the Canelo fight. And uh, even if Canelo Alvarez does call his number, that uh, he won't be ready due to the injury. So that's what sucked. David Benavides has been a consistent, consistent, inconsistent, right? Whether it's losing his belt not once, two times. Now he has an injury. He fights once a year. You know, we've seen at 168, he was definitely a weight bully because we did not see him perform like that against this guy pretty much his own size. And that's what the weight bully thing is, is you could do it to these guys who obviously has a huge major disadvantage, but when you finally face a guy your own size, a la Davina Hankey, you get your ass kicked, right? So, uh, David, let's see what you do. Uh, it looks like you're going to have surgery. You're going to be out for the rest of the year. So, yeah, man, the hype train is dead. It's over for now. Uh, wasn't a good look. Good good fight. Good performance. Wasn't a wow. It was just a mismatch because, like I said, I'm a hammer at home. Gavazdik did not come to win. Not going to say he laid down, but I had seen him maybe throw four or five meaningful punches and land two or three and then he just stood and, and walked away so um yeah man david ben, david benavides very underwhelming showed some promise but we're not looking for promise we're looking for statements so david benavides and eh, no statement today all right five fans hit that like frank bray with another fantastic breakdown you know what time it is man show some love and we'll be back with some more breakdowns Peace.